Okay, we're live. Cool, we're, we're live. Okay. That's good. So TC. Hey, uh, Paul. <laughs> this is Paul. Uh, I'm TC. So uh, today I'm very lucky. I got Paul to come on this live uh, feed here uh, talking about um, Indian clubs or swing clubs or all kinds of clubs you can see here. And uh, I'm, I'm very lucky he, uh, to be able to, to have him, you know, uh, train and uh, help me rehab my shoulders. And I must say it's been a really interesting journey and it was very successful, I think, in terms of how my shoulders have meant and healed. Uh, 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 um, uh, so that's why I thought, you know, I'm going to get Paul here and talk about the benefits of swing the clubs. And he's kind enough to offer his time, very generous uh, to show up here. And, talk about this and uh, Paul, you want to take over from here? Sure. Yeah. So my name is Paul Volkovinsky. I have an uh, Indian clubs um, website and YouTube channel, which, um, and I've been swinging clubs for 12 years now. And I'm talking about swinging Indian clubs, Persian meals, and um, the mace. And um, some of the questions that came through uh, to sort of get started on this are, sort of what are the minimalist moves for Indian clubs? One of, the most, one of the biggest benefits of Indian clubs is basically um, getting the shoulder girdle to move. So if you think of the, if you think of the, um, the shoulder as the center of a circle, if you swing your arm round in a circle, it's going through every sort of position that the shoulder girdle can go into. And that's incredibly beneficial. And it's one of the things that we've used with TC to rehab him after his um, uh, shoulder reconstruction. So circles, circles are very important. So, and now if you think about it, if I just pick up a club very carefully, and what's happening now is that the club, now my, I point the club so it's in line with my forearm, and if I move this in a circle now, it's gonna go out of view, but you're coming around again, the club basically extends my arm. This one is a two pound club, and it's, um, the, the arm is then moving an extra weight at the end of the arm and it's pulling out all the um, connective tissue, the fascia, the tendons and everything else. It's just literally drawing them out and stretching them. And this is a huge benefit in the sense that um, if you consider, for instance, um, lifting anything, whether it's um, barbells or kettlebells or whatever, um, it's basically this compression there. So I mean, you know, the, the, all the joints are being compressed. Well, Indian clubs does the reverse. It decompresses everything, especially because you've got a gravity pull as the club swings down, it decompresses, and then you, you bring the car, club on its flight path around. So the, 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 there are many, many, many circles in the Indian club work, but this, this simple shoulder circle is one of the best. And um, now, you can also do other things, which I'll touch on very, very quickly, is that the, um, when you swing circles, you can do it with one arm, or two arms, obviously, and you can, when you first start, you will be swinging a pendulum, which means that the club and your hand would swing down, and then back up again. Down and back up again. I think that's what I started with, yeah, the no, first that's, uh, that's six weeks out from my right, surgery. Yeah. 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 And TC, his, his range of motion was so limited that the pendulum was literally like this. Yeah, that's right. It, yeah. Was, it was just just on the sort of walking type of arm swing that you. That, that was like that. Yeah, no, which is fantastic. <laughs> okay. Which is yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Um, and also, um, you know, if you think about it, when you when you walk, your your hands are moving with in in um, in sync with your feet. So consequently, if you exaggerate this, you transverse turn and. The transverse turn is fantastic for the thoracic cage and basically um, for um, twisting your spine to one side and the other. So, I mean, that, that's to start off with. Um, and I'll just finish that sub section on. So, primarily, I would recommend Indian clubs for um, conditioning and um, to use as a warm up. And then, if you go into sort of any heavier disciplines, like whether you're um, training for wrestling, whatever discipline you're doing, whether it's um, martial arts or whatever, um, you would do Indian clubs first and then you use them as a warm down later on. Um, so yeah, conditioning and warm up is basically the, um, the benefit of Indian clubs. Now, the next question was, um, just in a very quick um, uh, pricey of it, what to avoid with Indian clubs? One of the things that often happens with um, 
uh, a, a person who's new to this is that they swing too quickly. And the swing, if it's a fast swing, it basically you compromise the movement. You don't actually allow, the, especially the shoulder girdle to turn its full circle. So everything's sort of condensed and doesn't allow for um, you know, a complete opening on the thoracic cage, for example, and so on. So um, that's something that is of particular, particularly to avoid. So slow is good as opposed to fast. Fast is not good. And people obviously sometimes make the mistake of thinking, oh, I'm going to go quicker because it's going to be better. It's not. It's the, in fact the reverse. The slower you go when you're learning, the better your form will be. And also the second thing to avoid would be um, Indian clubs, um, sorry, um, club bells, pardon me, which are too heavy. I mean, they, they, they normally start in the region of about two kilos, I, which I know, but then they sort of jump four, six, eight, ten, and so on and upwards. Now the problem with an Indian, uh, with a club bell is that it's basically, you know, if I just take out, pick up this um, two pound club, a, t a two kilo club bell is going to be very, very thin and it's going to be shorter than this. And this is about 18 inches long. And I think from memory, they're about 16 inches and then the four kilo is um, longer. But the problem is that they don't have a sort of a, me, a swinging action that you can really feel the weight at the end of it. They're too short for that. This, they're more like a sort of a dumbbell in my opinion. So they don't work very well. So I would avoid any form of club bell um, and basically the second problem is that because A they're too short and B they're just simply too heavy and there's also one thing that I'll add especially I mean these ones here the black ones are plastic the ones here at the back are wood this is also a wood one made that I make in here in WA which is called Jarrah and um, which I'm sure people are aware of um, there's a there's a very natural feeling to the handle on 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 anything that's made from wood so it's there's a there's an affinity there, which is really nice. Now, um, moving on. So um, there was another question about disciplines. So basically, I'm, I'm going to talk about disciplines right from the start. So we've got the Indian club bell. Then we go into the meal, which is the Persian meal. This is a fairly small one, which weighs three kilos. And then here are um, homemade maces, which is four kilos, seven and 18. So you can see that they change in size. All these maces here have got bamboo handles on them. And now there's, there's, before I start talking about them individually, there is a lot of crossover between the different types of um, movements you do. Some of the movements are used in Indian clubs and they're re replicated in the mace and also in um, meals. And um, just, okay, so what are the benefits of each individual one? As far as mobility is concerned, the Indian club is basically the, um, the, the tool for mobility of your shoulders in particular, but that sort of radiates down to your elbows and wrists and also your fingers. Um, the meal is more conditioning for the shoulders, specifically for the shoulders, but it also um, when you swing a meal, you have to activate the transverse turn because you have to move, as the meal goes behind your back, you have to move your shoulder blades out of the way um, for the meal to pass. And um, finally, the, um, the mace is for agility. In India, the mace is used by wrestlers um, as an agility tool to practice basically um, for fighting, for, for you know, throwing an opponent and so on. So, and to explain that a little bit more, a meal when it's swung is basically replicating a weapon, so a sword, because it, there's an attacking action and a defensive action with the meal. Whereas with, um, so it's, and there's no body contact with it, but where, whereas with the, the mace, the, the mace swing, I mean, especially when it's two-handed, is you're pulling somebody over your shoulder, hopefully throwing them onto their back in front of you. So there's a throw involved, and it, so the mace is a full contact um, uh, club to swing, and especially when it gets heavier. So the lighter maces, the four and the seven, you would not necessarily swing with body contact, but the 18, you probably would do, or there would be a bit of body contact. And I've seen um, in India, for, in, in some festivals, people swing up to about 60 kilos, which is, I mean, at, there's absolutely full body contact 
and they put oil on their backs to, um, like a mustard oil it's called, um, to allow the, the, the shaft of the mace to slide up and down the back. But we're not doing, we're not talking about that one. Today. <laughs> that's that's really too hardcore. <laughs> that's that's very hardcore. And it's um, quite scary when you see it, when you see a very small guy throwing something like that around. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. worry about asking you a quick question. Yeah, like, um, you know, like we, we see a lot of conventional, uh, uh, commercially made maze and stuff. And yes. I think there's no secret that you have preference for the bamboo and yes. the concrete. Do you want to explain a little bit about that? Why your preference okay, is my, that? Yeah? Yes, yes, I do. Yes. So with with the um, the bamboo and concrete mace, mm -hmm. the all the weight is in the end of the mace. So there's no there's no weight in the actual shaft itself. Um, so that means that the the mace is going to as it, as you drop the mace to the side, it accelerates really quickly, and then you've got to put all you've got to um, grab all that inertia and pull it up onto the other side of the body. Um, with a steel mace, the problem is that there's too much weight in the handle itself, so that the mace is, is starts off being out of balance. And one of the things that, and it's, it's still unexplained to me, one of the things that happens is that mace manufacturers put a pommel on the end of a steel mace. And the pommel basically, um, you know, I've been told and I've spoken to a number of different manufacturers about it, um, is there, they, they, they say it's there for safety reasons so that the athlete does not drop the mace. But basically what it does, it restricts because there's weight in, a lot of weight involved, it restricts the athlete's handling by allowing that the, the hand drops against the pommel and the other hand drops hard against it because they're trying to use the pommel uh, as, a, as a device for swinging, which is completely wrong and it needs to be like these ones here are, as you can see there, there's no pommel there. I'm just gonna pull it in so you can see it against the white wall. So there's no pommel here as opposed to the Indian club that has a pommel. The Indian club does need a pommel. Um, again, so there's two reasons. One is the pommel on, on the um, uh, steel maces and the other one is the handle is, has too much weight. But in saying that, there, is, there are moves by some manufacturers now to start making maces without a pommel, which is really good news because um, some people just have a preference for steel, which is fine. Um, but that even the, just taking the pommel off is going to reduce the weight of the actual mace itself because you don't want that weight at the end. You yeah. want it. You all want it. It's concentrated yeah. at the end of the, yeah. the yeah. pump. Yeah. That's right. I think uh, also it goes on to like I think the benefits of having no pommel and then having a, a, a bamboo stick. I think you were you mentioned that in the workshop, the mace workshop, you did it here. Yeah. Uh, how you actually allow you to actually handle the thing, uh, the maze better with the skin. Yes, yeah. yeah. I think you were going to talk about that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. basically there's something which I call the skin grip mm -hmm. and that relates to Indian clubs and mace. And basically I'll just sort of demonstrate it here, is you want the, the if you put the club into the hand and if I pull on it, basically the skin tightens. So you've got a soft grip and the weight itself tightens the skin around it. So basically, and that's what holds the the club or the mace in position when you swing it. So, uh, and that's a really, it, it's, it's kind of goes against the grain because you normally with um, other forms of lifting, you would hang on to something really tightly. Um, the only exception that I can think of basically is also the, um, the kettlebell swing where you, you know, you hook yep. the kettlebell. Yep. And um, that, that's, that's, that's a good example of, you know, using your hand in a different way. So it's not what I call a death grip, but it's a it's a loose grip, and you, you know you're allowing your skin to help you kind of lock the club and the, or the mace into position. And that what it, that's really important about that it is allows for hand changes. So with a mace, you want to be sometimes in a hammer grip. I'm just doing this so that you can see it on the on the um, camera. And then sometimes, depending on where there is the mace is around the body, you want it on a saber grip, which is that way. So saber grip is a thrusting grip, and that hammer grip is basically literally for, for you know nailing something in to yeah. the wall. Yeah, I, I guess safety for safety as well. I guess yeah, long term skin grip is better than being being pulled to the yeah. end of the pommel with all the weight at the one end. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and it's um, it also um, uh, being able to vary your grip allows you to um, to counterbalance the weight because you've got to remember 
here, I mean, if you think about it, you're going to throw somebody over your shoulder. That's yeah. the idea. Yeah. So as the as the um, you swing the mace through, so the weight is over here, yeah. swing it through, and there's the throw. You, 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 you being able to change hand position allows you to control the counterbalance properly. Right. Yeah. 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 So that's um, that's basically the um, that one. Yeah. Okay. But there's lots and lots about this stuff. I mean, I could talk probably all day about this. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so yeah, cool. Well, have you uh, covered everything? Like, I think, I think so. No, the only thing that yeah. I haven't, haven't actually touched on, which was the final, like, final words about this. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's uh, as opposed to building, um, you know, what weights should you start with? You know, basically for, um, for anybody who's a slighter build, I would recommend one pound for People who are my build, I'm five foot eight. TC's a little bit taller than me, five foot nine probably or something like that. Yep. You know, two pounds is probably enough. Yep. But in my recent workshop that I did in, in um, uh, Connecticut in the USA, we bought two pound um, Indian clubs and one pounders. And all the guys, we, we actually sold out of the one pounders because a lot of them tried the exercises and they weren't running for, for the one pound clubs because they said that the two pounders were too heavy. So that just gives you um, an idea of the difference of swinging something in a full arc around, you know, around the, um, the pivot point of your shoulder. It feels completely different to say, you know, um, lifting a 24 kilo kettlebell into a, in, into the um, rack position and then pressing yeah. it up or whatever yeah. that sort of thing. So it's a different different ball game. Completely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember last week you, you showed me the asynchronous uh, asynchronous swing. Shape. Yeah. Uh, and I was doing with the two pounds and completely lost. I mean, the, the two pounds was not heavy, but then after that, I, I took home the lesson and I cracked, I, I, I regressed one pound. Yeah. And I actually picked up the move better with the one better, pound. That's, that's correct. So yeah. uh, the, the two pounder was a bit distracting for me in terms of how I need to deal yeah, with it. Yeah, I mean, you're also you know? dealing, you know, yeah. you're also de dealing with the grip changes and yeah, everything else. Yeah, so there's a lot yeah. to actually physically think yeah, about. Yeah. And I think that that's, um, you know, so, there's nothing, there's no um, rules about this, but li the lighter the better to start off with. Yeah. And quite frankly, you know, you might, so any, if you're coming into Indian clubs for the first time, you would use maybe a one pounder for say six months, and then possibly buy a two pound set, but you'd be towing and throwing, you'd be using one arm, and if you're tired, for example, or fatigue sets in, you can drop down to your one pounders, and then you can go back to the two pounders. So I mean, you'd use them um, together. I, just to give you an example, I mean, even after sort of like 12 years of club swinging, I regularly use two pound clubs, two and a half pound clubs, regular as clockwork. So I mean, because they, they will give you, a, you know, a fantastic shoulder workout and, um, you know, conditioning basically, which is what we're talking about doing here. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. So um, just, just last, last sure. thing before okay. we close. Um, how, how would you think um, that the Indian club work, you know, just a standalone itself as a restorative means uh, for people uh, training, you know, for, for better, or, or better postures, things like that? Yes. What, what's your opinion on that? Well, the thing is, I mean, with, with Indian clubs, one of the things that you'll notice straight away with Indian clubs is that your, your arms go <laughs> oops, oops, not going to <laughs> So your arms will go overhead. And so that your biceps touches your ears. Um, so basically, and that what that does is it opens up your rib cage, so you can take more air into your rib cage, and it also opens up the thoracic area so much because you're doing a movement out like this. Um, so and every time your arms go up, you should be breathing in. Every time your arms pass your feet or the clubs pass your feet, you're breathing out. And it gives you a very, very nice rhythmic form of breathing, um, and then, and it's deep breathing. It's not just lightweight. So I mean, it's something that's sort of quite, quite new to a lot of people when they first start doing this. So and then the um, so moving on to this, um, it gives you sort of joint mobility. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, the which, shows, which a lot of people who are desk bound are yeah, starting to does, lose, yes. they lose their posture. Yes. So, yeah. the, so the posture and the joint mobility is I mean, really, really important. I mean, you know, we're all on our iPhones like this. Yeah. You know, I, I, there's, a, there's a beautiful, um, there's a, there's a, I can't remember who the photographer that did it, but there's a wonderful picture of, yeah. 
uh, of people tra standing at a train station in the, the early or the late 1950s with you know, broadsheet newspapers yep. holding them like this, okay. all reading newspapers. Yep. And beside that or underneath it, there's a photograph of everybody in the iPhone like this. <laughs> and I think, I mean, that really summed it up for me because you've got that sort of, you know, the rounding of the shoulders, you're on the computer, you're rounding the shoulders. This opens you up opens you up sort of every you know every breath you take you, you you're basically straight opening up and then other things like for instance coordination elbow and wrist movements there's fantastic sort of you know manipulations of the wrist that you will do that eases up all the joints finger finger fans like this which you would learn to do also so and it's just mobility and the indian clubs just basically sort of liven up the synovial fluid and all your joints and get that moving yeah. Cool. That's okay. good. Uh, did you have anything to add? Uh, no, I, I think so. I, I think we pretty think, much come to the yeah, end. I, um, I think we've come to the end. I mean, I just basically as it would say to me, you know, if you if you're up for something that's new and uh, or sort of it's not new, basically is different. Yeah. Then um, you should give it a try. Basically. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I I have never really explored Indian club before my surgery. I wish I had, uh, but I would say. Uh, uh, Indian Club has immensely helped myself, um, restore my shoulders, helped me regain a lot of uh, movement that uh, I started, to, that, that I lost, but now I can start doing them, which is great. And also just from training, my personal training clients, I, I, um, it's just another, it becomes a, a, another valuable tool in my toolbox that I can draw and help improve my clients' mobility, make them move better, especially most of my clients are desk bound. And uh, that is a very, very, very valuable uh, tool uh, for me. And um, yeah, so I would say even if you don't have shoulder reconstruction, I, I would say still still do the Indian Club, give it a go, uh, because you know chances are you probably always on your phone, your passes are great. So yeah. and uh, yeah, I definitely give it a big thumbs up. I, I would still be doing it even though my shoulders are will be considered fully men uh, in February next year. Um, yeah, so that's that's what I would add. Yeah, so, no, I think yeah. you know, also you mentioned last week that you were using um, Indian clubs for um, for the hundred swing challenge and yes. and for the you were using them for actual um, active breathing, recovery, re active recovery. Yes, yes, which I think is w worth mentioning. Uh, yes, at this yes, point. that that has helped a lot. I found that uh, even people training here and um what what i did was you know um when they do a set of hard work say 10 swings we i would get them to do 10 frontal circles yes you know making sure that they like you just said oh, breathe up. out yes on the breathe way in. down yep. when the clock goes up breathe in breathe in um just doing 10 and they were able to manage to get through 10 sets without problem versus when they didn't do it before they were like probably panting a lot because they yeah, they weren't recovering fast they weren't enough. Recovering yeah. fast enough. They were not controlling their breathing, but the Indian club somehow set them into the routine. I think that's really helpful. Yes. So, so yeah. I mean, I think that I think that adds another sort of dimension. Okay, so you can use um, Indian clubs as a warm up, which is I mentioned right at the beginning of the yeah. show, and um, here you've got a situation for active recovery mm -hmm. in in very very intense um, kettlebell swings. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got the combination of of um, deep breathing that Indian clubs breathe you brings you, preparing you for the next set, basically. I yes, that's yes. Just summed that one up. Yes, yes, that's right. Which is a brilliant use of it, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah that's right. So, uh, yeah, I guess we, we, we come to the end okay. now. Okay, now what I need to uh, do here is this. Can you tell everybody where can they quickly get some quick resource, how to get uh, to learn the Indian clubs, how to swing it, and also about your upcoming workshop, you know, in the States, so they could sure. be someone uh, from America watching this, they, they, need, they might want to know okay. the details about your workshop and stuff. Sure, so yeah. um, T, uh, we've got um, mm -hmm. Indian clubs coming here to Australia, um, which I'm hoping are going to arrive by the end of December. So there will be workshops happening here mm -hmm. at TC's gym um, in, the, in the new year. I've also got workshops um, planned for um, with Ken, Kelly Manzoni in um, uh, Connecticut, Wilton, Connecticut. Uh, for the 4th of May and um, there's another one that, which is the Easter weekend with John Parker on the west coast of the States plus there's going to be a few others there um, not necessarily in the States but one or two maybe in Europe at the same following on from those workshops and um, yeah that, that, that basically yeah. So in the, in, but in, as far as Perth is concerned we are definitely going to be running workshops here um, as an intro first and then on a sort of continuation style basis
Yep. Yeah. All right. So um, definitely, if you get the chance, I definitely uh, wholeheartedly recommend going to the workshop, learning from Paul in person. Nothing beats that. You can only learn so much from YouTube and Facebook. Um, so that is all. Thank yep. you, Paul, for Thank coming you. to the Thanks show. For the uh, and uh, we'll talk show uh, talk yeah. shop again soon. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right.